Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? Let's begin at two well-known constellations in the south. The first, Scorpius, may be the easier one to find, what with having first magnitude Antares and some of its other bright stars reaching a higher elevation over the horizon at culmination. To the east of Scorpius is Sagittarius. While its stars are a bit dimmer, only two of them are second magnitude, a careful look for the many stars that are 3.5 magnitude or brighter reveals quite a bit of constellation here. The most prominent shape is that of the teapot. The handle is clearly to the east, the lid, a simple triangle up top, and the spout off to the west. Under darker skies, the Milky Way is dense in this area both lit up from the collective light of millions of distant stars, along with the darker areas due to clouds of unlit gas and dust. And just off the spout of the teapot, like a kettle just about to boil, is a brighter patch of the Milky Way. Right in this area is the center of our Milky Way galaxy, where the black hole Sagittarius A resides. Now, look at the space between al Nasl in Sagittarius, the star at the spout of the teapot, and Shaula, the second brightest star in Scorpius. Take some 7 by 35 or larger binoculars and aim them right between these two stars. The wonderful open cluster Messier 7 blazes into glory here. And due to its angular diameter of nearly 1.5 degrees, binoculars are the best way to view it compared to a telescope that would have a narrower field of view. Keep those binoculars handy and dust off a telescope. We'll find a few more objects nearby. And now this week's Dark Sky Fact. Have you downloaded the Loss of the Night app to your smartphone? This free app from Globe at Night is simple to use. Let it know what brighter stars you can see, and finally, when you can no longer see the dimmer ones. That's it! And in so doing, you can help track light pollution. Try it out this week. Let's look up towards the lid of the teapot. The Sagittarius area is so dense with objects, you can really just sweep binoculars around this area and see so many objects. But we want to identify a few of these. First, go to the lid of the teapot at the 2.8 magnitude star, Caus Borealis. Look at the stars making up the bottom of the lid now, Caus Media and Phi Sagittarii. Make a line that is nearly parallel to that line made by those two stars, but start at Caus Borealis and move your binoculars towards the east, just five degrees, that's within a binoculars field of view. The incredible globular cluster Messier 22 is here, one of the finest globulars in the entire night sky to see, and you can spot it with simple binoculars. Now this object really is better with a telescope, so go on and find it with one. Use a magnified finder to follow the same star hop, or even just estimate the location using a red dot finder scope. From here, draw a line from Phi through Caus Borealis. Now go a similar distance past Caus that those two stars are apart from each other. You'll find a backwards C-shaped set of stars, composed of ones from 5th through 7th magnitude. Notice the first stars for the lower section of the backwards C, that's the open cluster NGC 6530. Now try to block as much extraneous light as possible. Ideally go to dark skies, but that's not possible for all of us. And look at this cluster with a telescope. Noticeably near the two bright stars in the middle, one of which is nine Sagittarii, is a brightening of the sky. Well, actually, it's the nebula Messier 8, or the Lagoon Nebula. This is an active star-forming region, and much of NGC 6530 was born from this gas cloud. And it's an emission nebula that glows from the ionization of its gas from nearby stars. Did you like this video? Subscribe on YouTube, and please consider sharing with others on social media sites so we can continue educating about light pollution. For star maps of the Sagittarius region and more information on amateur astronomy and stargazing, visit eyesonthesky.com. Thanks for watching. Keep your eyes in the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller, wishing you clear and dark skies.